Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another edition of StreetWave Webinars. My name is Richard Bernhardt. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing and Communications for StreetWave Wireless. StreetWave is a distributor for the wireless industry. We provide equipment for a whole range of things dealing with wireless indoor and outdoor applications and solutions. We are very pleased to provide uh, webinars on a range of topics and trainings and about new products and information. Uh, today, our presentation is on a new product uh, called Fleet Links. It's actually a, a grouping of products. Fleet Links is brought to us by Vestima Networks, Inc., and is a product designed for vehicles, trucks, equipment in the field, um, and is designed especially for efficiencies and tracking and providing all sorts of information and feedback that you can use in order to uh, track what happens in the field. Um, it is unique. It is not simply a GPS product. And I think you will see today that there are a lot of applications that this product provides that can be beneficial uh, across the board. Whether you're in the long haul trucking business or you have a small fleet of vehicles deployed for service, or you're a taxi provider or a public service provider, emergency provider, the Fleet Links product will provide you with a basis for um, all of those needs. One of the great things about the way technology works today is it allows us access to areas that we haven't had in the past. Uh, you likely haven't seen a product like this before, and Fleet Links is, is more than a GPS and tracking product. It provides effective information for maintenance, efficiency, compliance, and cost savings. I'm very pleased to uh, provide uh, Robert Forget from Vessema Networks today. He will be providing um, an overview of both this product um, and its benefits, as well as a live demonstration so you can see what it does and how it can benefit you. Robert is a longtime friend of Streakwave and a longtime member of the Vessema Network, and he is the Assistant Vice President of Product Marketing or Management, excuse me, for Vessema. I'd like to welcome uh, Robert and let him begin to tell you a little bit about this new wonderful line of Fleet Links. Welcome, Robert. Thank you very much, Richard. That was a great introduction, and it saves me having to go through some of that myself here at the beginning, which is uh, great. Um, Fleet Links is a solution family, uh, more so than a product itself. Uh, we provide a total solution for fleet management needs. As Richard alluded to, there are three main variants of the product, one of which is for the long haul trucks or anything that's a class five and above vehicle, and that communicates via CAN bus to the engine itself uh, on the J1939 standard. We also have it for the smaller vehicles, so class four and below, uh, via OBD2 right into the engine. The reason that we created fleet links uh, was specifically to be able to measure uh, the information that's coming from that vehicle, uh, both from the engine as well as information as fuel efficiency, uh, wheel speeds, uh, idle times, and things of that nature. Uh, without the ability to measure, there's no way that you can really improve your fleet's effectiveness out in the uh, field. A little bit about Vesma Networks. We've been around since 1988. We're a publicly traded company. Uh, we have long-term relationships with a variety of recognizable companies, and that's about as deep into that as I'm going to get. We're, we're more interested in the product itself here, and I want to get through the presentation quickly so we can get right into the portal where we can see some of the advantages of the solution. Really, there are three market forces that drove us to develop this. Um, we're not the only fleet management product on the market, but we do have some differentiations uh, on ours. A couple of them are on the economic side. Uh, we have an open API associated with our solution, so we can tie in all of that data that's created into any of your third-party systems. So if you have a maintenance system for your fleet, if you have a billing system for your fleet, uh, things of that nature, we can push data directly uh, both from the Vesema product, which is the black box inside of the vehicle, as well as from the driver services side, uh, which we'll have Mario speak uh, to very shortly. On the social side, what we've seen more and more is green fleet initiatives uh, across a variety of governmental and municipality across uh, North America. 
also on the green fleet side that's partly associated with the economic as well uh, since a lot of that is surrounding idle policies uh, and no idle policies moving forward as well as uh, some of the speed type policies as well uh, reducing your speed by uh, five miles per hour does a very large increase in your fuel efficiency on the technological side we're seeing now the electronic onboard recording legislation coming to North America uh, that is primarily on the long haul sides the larger vehicles and it's going to be a great efficiency increase for the drivers as well as being able to meet some of these uh, requirements prior to them becoming made law. So the Advanced Mobile Gateway itself, that's the black box there in the bottom right. It's a fairly small box about the size of three decks of cards. It's typically mounted in the dash of the vehicle or in the headliner if you have uh, a fiberglass headliner in the vehicle. As I mentioned, it's EOBR capable. Uh, some of the advantages to our product is it's multi-purpose or multi-mode radio. Uh, we have both CDMA and GSM technologies available inside, as well as Wi-Fi for connectivity. Um, with that, we can do over-the-air updates to the unit. Uh, so any software updates, we can push any of the new firmware right over the air, as opposed to having to go into your garage to physically connect to it. And it's completely invisible to your driver as well as to your fleet manager. On the data recording side, if for any reason you ever do lose connectivity or if you don't have cellular connectivity, we record all of the information coming from your vehicle, both on the location side as well as on the engine uh, information side. And we can record for over a month uh, of check-ins. And then whenever you do have data connectivity, be it Wi-Fi back at the garage or be it cellular, all of those historical points will be pushed up into the uh, cloud where you have your access to your data via any internet ready device. We also have the general purpose input output on this. Uh, I'm going to not talk about that in too much detail, but that allows for sensor integration, um, control integration, if you have a refrigerated unit, for example, and things of that nature. This is a picture of the portal. We're going to get to that in real time. Uh, the one thing I wanted to mention was the fact that it is open API. So all of your data is your data. You own it. And we provide it to you in a very easy to use format uh, whenever you want to use it for anything outside of the portal, be it fuel tax, um, geofence information, anything at all. We talked about the green initiatives a little bit. And again, it's back to the requirement to measure it. Uh, we can see a green initiative being mapped out by a company or a fleet out there. And unless they can measure it and prove that it's effective, then there's no real way of showing any kind of a return on investment on it. Uh, by being able to track your idle details down to a very granular level, which I will show you, uh, you're able to track exactly the amount of fuel that you're using and exactly the amount of fuel that you can save. Uh, we talked about the digital input-output. A variety of sensor types can be integrated into the system. Uh, we can customize it at the end of the day. Uh, my engineering team is still in place, and it's a continuous upgrade both on the software side as well as on the hardware side. And we are happy to make customizations for your fleets, uh, regardless of what they happen to be, to make the product more usable for you. Uh, we also use an open source on the uh, embedded firmware side. So we're happy to make that code available to you as well if you want to take a look at making modifications yourself. Some of the benefits of the system and the solution family is, again, if you can't measure it, you can't control it. Um, we talked about idle times and fuel consumption, definitely important. Uh, on the location side, it's important to be able to optimize the routing of your vehicle. And if you're a service provider of any sort, uh, you know as well as I do that whenever you've got install, installs scheduled out in the field, if you have a vehicle that finishes early, you'll know exactly where they are and if you can route them to potentially get in one additional install at the end of the day. Um, we actually own a uh, subsidiary company called Yearlink up here in Canada, uh, primarily in Saskatchewan, and they are a service provider. We, we handle about 14,000 customers on the uh, fixed wireless side, and all of their vehicles are have the FleetLink solution installed and we're using it not only for uh, idle and fuel efficiencies, but we're also using it so that we can try to get in as many installs as possible. And we're seeing some pretty great um, increases there where 
one install a day means a lot to uh, your top line and your bottom line revenue. I am going to pass along the uh, audio here to Mario, the general manager from Mobile Warrior, our partner company providing the driver services piece. Good morning. How are you guys? I'm going to um, crank through a few slides here and give you some overall information. Uh, the first slide you see, we're right now in the USA alone, there are 7.3 million trucks on the road. Uh, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, FMCSA for short, makes all these, these onerous rules that truck drivers need to manage, and uh, it's a real pain. Next slide. Uh, safety is obviously the big concern. There's a lot of uh, the media loves to get all over truck and uh, motor coach or bus accidents. Um, they, and, and so it's, it's a very high profile thing and that's why uh, there's been a lot of attention paid to these rules. Next slide. Uh, right now drivers spend a lot of time doing compliance paperwork. Uh, inspections, logs, tracking their hours, lots of adding and subtracting activities and filling out a paper every, every single day. And uh, it's, it's a lot of redundancy. Um, and on the company side, next, <clears throat> companies, all of that paperwork from the drivers gets sent into the company. The company then has to review that paperwork, approve it, send it back to the driver if it's not right to be fixed. So there's paper flowing back and forth and then they have to uh, file it and uh, if there's a, a DOT, a Department of Transportation audit, they have to pull it out for that. So lots of back office work happens with this paperwork as well. Next slide. So we think the solution is, is to put this stuff on a mobile device. And we are basically the driver interface for the FleetLink system. So our device talks with the FleetLink device, and we do all of this stuff. We do the driver logs and many more things as well. Electronic onboard recording. Uh, so logs are automatically kept uh, by when the truck is moving. Puts the driver into driving status. When the truck stops, it puts them into on duty, not driving. It just kind of manages the logs for up throughout throughout the day for the driver. Um, all of this data is 100% safe and secure, backed up in our server cloud. And just to show you how comprehensive we are, we have 35 different rule sets in our application. So we've, we've got everything from Canada to Mexico, lots of uh, specialized rules covered in our, in our um, system. The EOBR use has doubled the last two years, yet uh, there's a large market opportunity for us because only a third of the fleets out there currently have them. Those that do have them notice that the violations from the drivers and the crashes are decreasing 12% annually for those that are on the OBR logs. And as, uh, uh, as Robert mentioned, uh, all 7.3 million of these trucks are going to have to be on EOBR logs within the next three years. Next slide. So some of the value here. Um, Increased driver efficiency is huge. Our drivers tell us that they save somewhere between three to five hours per week uh, in paperwork, um, which is uh, you know, a huge increase in driver productivity. Those trucks don't make money sitting around with drivers doing paperwork. Uh, DOT risk is reduced. Uh, DOT audit compliance is simplified because everything is done electronically. Uh, back office efficiency, hours and hours of admin time, checking and managing the compliance paperwork. Fleet management, um, all of the driver information as well as the truck information is available on a web portal. You can see where your drivers are, um, how many hours they have available before they, so that they're in compliance to get that extra load or two in per month. Driver communication. Our system allows uh, the dispatching uh, people, the fleet managers, to actually assign equipment and loads to the drivers. Those get to pushed right down to the driver's mobile device so they have all the information available for that load. They can actually complete the load 
and get a customer signature on it. They can take a picture of the load if there's a problem with it even. Um, asset management is huge right now in trucking companies. Those trucks are expensive. And uh, real-time reporting of equipment problems using our inspection system in there. Uh, drivers can actually make comments about things that uh, need to be fixed on the truck. Uh, they can take pictures of those things. They can send that in immediately and uh, get those trucks turned around and back on the road. Less wear and tear on the equipment by taking better care of it. Uh, we also have a payroll system built in to our, um, our app. Uh, the, the comp uh, our customers can create and download driver payroll reports by miles, by shifts, by hours, any way they want that. It's a custom report generator. We have clients that download it into a spreadsheet and then upload it into their payroll system. So it saves them hours and hours of time. And, and like Robert said, you know, it's not our data, it's our customers' data. So whatever they want, uh, you, all of our data is easily downloaded into uh, uh, spreadsheets for further analysis and uh, integration with other systems. So again, the FMCSA has mandated that all 7.3 million trucks need to be on these systems within three years. So again, a large market opportunity. Our app, our cloud servers, our web portals are all tested. And best of all, uh, our app and our system between us and Fleet Links, it's, it's all an open API structure, meaning that we can easily send data and integrate with other systems. And if you see something that, you don't, that we don't have, let us know. We can build it for you. Back to you, Robert. Thanks, Mario. So we're going to flip over to the portal for the black box side of things. So this is what your fleet management group would take a look at on a daily basis whenever they go into the system. Uh, this is the dashboard for the portal. The dashboard provides an overview of the entire fleet and this gives you three of the uh, main items that you're going to be looking at on a regular basis. Um, on the left you can see the idle period occurrences. As I mentioned, we're tracking all of this information. We can drill down to specific trucks from the dashboard as well. In this case, I drilled down to an idle period occurrence that was over 30 minutes. It was just over 30 minutes, and it was on truck 8. So going to that data, you can drill down even further. You can see the timeline, when it happened. And one step further, you'll actually get a Google satellite view of exactly where that idle period occurred. Um, this allows you to take a look uh, for your installers, if you're a service provider, to see, hey, somebody didn't turn off their truck whenever they went in to do their equipment install. That's uh, a lot of gas that's being burned for no apparent reason. In this case, it looks like the truck was doing a pickup. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention, too, all of the data that you're seeing here in this portal is live data from one of our customers. Uh, so we have 10 trucks that are associated with this demo instance of the portal. Uh, the reports archive piece, you'll see that it won't load. Um, a lot of the identifying information for those vehicles has been wiped from this instance of the server, so I can't actually generate reports out of it. Um, similarly, on the fuel economy, you can pull it down from the specific vehicles. Uh, you can see the fuel economy as well as the fuel consumed. So if you're taking a look at the fuel consumed, you can see the driving fuel that's being consumed, but you can also see the fuel that's being uh, consumed via idle times over the period that they've been driving. So you can say here that there's five gallons of uh, fuel consumed over idle in a five-day span. So that's something that you can quickly see the ROI based on reducing these idle times. The, the other item that's exceedingly important is the faults. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're not just a location-only solution. We tie directly into the engine of the vehicle. Uh, tying into that engine allows you to get all of the faults associated with all of your vehicles in real time. So this allows you to keep trucks on the road longer, and it also gives you a pure report here by code of all of the faults when they were raised, when they were cleared. And you can take a look at faults that are still active and see if they're urgent and require immediate garage, or if they're something that's a, a high voltage on a wiper blade, for example, in which case that's something that you can schedule off into the future. Uh, there is a way to get verbose 
as opposed to code-based faults as well. And we'll go and take a look at that now. Uh, clicking through on your vehicle side, you'll get to the map that shows you where all of your vehicles are. And as you can see, we've got a few that are driving right now. Let's go down to seven. It seems to have be a good one to take a look at. So it's coming up the highway there. You can see it's about to cross over the border into Oregon. Uh, you get a variety of information in real time from this truck. So if we do want to take a look at one truck as opposed to your entire fleet, uh, you can go to that single vehicle and it'll zoom in for you. Uh, whenever you do go to a single vehicle, it'll give you the historical check-ins for the last 30 minutes. Uh, you can see that uh, this vehicle was stopped and idling about 10 minutes ago and then started to drive. Uh, one thing that you'll note on our system versus some of the others, we have a uh, accelerometer built into the unit as well. So we don't just do a five-minute interval check-in. Uh, because in that case, you have two points, you're drawing a line between them, and chances are you're going to be driving through buildings, through lakes, you name it. Um, by doing it with the curve tracking, we keep the trucks to the roads that they're actually driving on. Uh, this is important whenever you're taking a look at your historical data and you're doing route optimizations, especially in an urban environment for a service company. Um, here you can see the trucks that are associated with the vehicle and it will give you a description of what they are. So you can see in this case that there's an engine cylinder where we're, we're having a uh, actuator issue with uh, valid data, but above the operating range. It's a high severity, so chances are the fleet manager for this truck has scheduled to get them off the road to get that fixed. Some of the other information is associated with it is all the information directly from the engine, of course, and in this case, the J1939 data. Now, we collect all of the J1939 data that's coming off of that engine via the CAN bus. Uh, similarly, if it was a small car, it would be OBD2 providing you that data. Now, we display this is kind of a default list of the data that's displayed. If there's specific data that you're interested in seeing that we don't include, we can very quickly uh, change out the portal to display that information. And, and this, available, this data is available now. This is the current or the last check-in. Uh, but you can also see it historically as well. So if you see an engine fault come up, you want to see what was happening before and what was happening after, you can. And this tracks things like your RPM as well as uh, your wheel speed. And the wheel speed is important as it's a secondary check to the GPS speed and uh, usually considerably more accurate than the speed that you're pulling off of a GPS at any given time. Um, one story here on a single unit is the fact that all of that data, the historical data, is available. And that historical data is available forever. So we don't purge your data from the system after two months or after three months. From the moment that you install the unit, we have your data forever. And that allows you to uh, track the past as well as the future. And as you can see, well, nothing happened on the 4th or the 5th. Uh, but we, we can change it accordingly to whatever we are interested in changing it to. And we can see the driving over that period of time. Uh, we ran into this with one of our customers who ended up having an accident. And they were getting sued by the person who said that uh, they caused the accident. Well, we went back into the history, and we were able to prove uh, without any doubt that the truck was actually turned off at the time of the accident and the folks who were suing them actually drove into their own drove into the vehicle so that case went away very quickly with that kind of not a trail uh, same similarly as I showed earlier the satellite view uh, we are completely tied in with Google for all of our mapping so we can change the map types at any given time if you would prefer to see a satellite type view or a terrain type view uh, we can also add a traffic overlay to the map, and you can take a look at real-time traffic and then reroute your vehicles accordingly based on that. Um, we also have Street View available, so if you're doing an install at a certain location and you're interested in knowing what's happening around, this guy's in the middle of nowhere on a highway, so it's not very interesting, but you can take a look at it. You can see the house that they're at and potentially help them out with uh, selecting antenna position. A couple of the other features associated with the portal are alerts. You can generate alerts based on three different uh, situations. One will be a speed alert. Very simply, if you have a max speed that you want to be alerted on, if you know that you have 
truck three or truck four and seven, um, and you know they, these guys drive fast, you can put in an alert for whatever you want to set it at. So if you want to set a 75 mile per hour alert, now in the second any of those vehicles go above that speed, you'll get an email with the details of surrounding that event. Uh, similarly, fault alerts, which are, I think, more important. Uh, you can get real-time alerts on engine ch chassis or transmission, and we're tracking tens of thousands of fault types uh, with our device. So instead of having a driver who sees an engine light come on and automatically stops to bring it in, uh, they can take a look. They can, you can see what the fault happens to be, and if it's only a minor fault, you can work through the day, keep the truck on the road, and get in your installs, get in the additional time, as opposed to pulling it off the road and potentially wasting time that you could have spent more efficiently. Uh, the third type of alert is a geofence alert. Let's take a look at geofencing. Um, we decided, whenever we were architecting the solution, to make everything as simple as possible. Uh, in this case, for a geofence, if I wanted to create a geofence, say, around Ashland, all I need to do is right-click on the map, open up my geofence control, and the geofence can be a polygon, as complicated as you like, or it can be as simple as a circular geofence, which I'll show you. Uh, you can resize it to whatever you're looking for and drop it into the location that you want. We'll call this one Ashland. Once you've named your geofence, you associate it with the fleet. In this case, I only have one fleet. Meanwhile, if you have a larger vehicle base that you're associated with, be it regional or if you're a municipality, uh, it could be departments, uh, we can split those fleets up. So instead of having to look at hundreds of vehicles in a single screen, uh, we can take a look at parts and rec versus roads versus um, the other departments separately. And have geofences associated with each. So if they come back to a different garage at the end of the day and you're interested in knowing when, you can create the geofence for that fleet for their specific garage and not have the other departments triggering it whenever they're driving by. Uh, once the geofence is created, you'll be able to see the last 72 hours of activity of entering and exiting the geofence uh, directly on the map. Uh, you'll also be able to uh, create the alerts based on the geofence. And the alerts, again, are via email, and you can select a geofence alert to a specific geofence, and then you can associate it to the vehicles based on entering or exiting or both. Uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, it's very good for garages, so you know whenever somebody's leaving at the beginning of the day and when they come back at the end of the day. Uh, we've also had people out there who want to embed geofences, uh, which we do support, so we can create a new circular geofence on the map, and overlap it with an existing one. Um, that allows us to do estimated times of arrival. And we've had some of our transport companies who, uh, who are bus companies, who are bringing in people, create almost what would look like a target of ever, ever decreasing size geofences. This allows them to estimate a time of arrival of a bus uh, at a specific stop. So that's about as deeply in uh, to the portal as I'm going to get right now. I would like to pass control over to Mario to take a quick look through the simulator uh, that the driver has access to. I'm ready when you are. Should be coming to you now. OK. Uh, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, it's there. Go okay, ahead. great. So what you see is kind of a blown up iPhone here, but this could be an iPad or an Android device as well. Um, it, this is uh, the actual driver app. Uh, when I go in, I navigate the app along the bottom here between logs. I can uh, do inspections. I can assign or unassign equipment to myself. I can uh, build reports like driver logs and inspection reports. Uh, under the More tab, we have other things like the loads. Any loads that get pushed down to me would show up in the Loads tab. I can complete those, take a picture, make comments. Um, vehicle history is from the um, Fleet Manix device. It shows up here. Um, I can also track expenses like fuel purchases and any expense, really. 
I can come in and create an expense. I can um, classify it into different expense categories or put it on a route, uh, payment types, um, metrics, or, or US dollars, as the case may be. I can even um, take a picture of it. Uh, if this were a real iPhone and not a simulator, it would allow me to take a picture of the receipt. And then I can um, save that and uh, send the record in as an email with a picture of the receipt on it, or I would uh, just be able to get it off of the back end web portal. Uh, so that's expenses. Um, we have lots of good help, um, an 800 number to call in on, email support. Uh, training videos, and then a, an actual training guide right on the um, device itself that walks the driver through various tasks that they would like to do. So um, lots of good support for customers. Coming back to logs, what you see right now in front of you is an actual hour summary. Uh, so this shows the activity for the month for this particular driver. Days of the month, how many hours I worked today, and here's my eligible hours. Drivers have to continually manage their eligible hours to make sure they don't run out of driving hours. You can see down here on the 12th, he got pretty close to running out. He only had about a little over four hours left. And then it, once they hit the limit, they have to go off duty for a certain amount of time to reset their hours back up to, uh, to give them more driving hours. Um, as far as rule sets go, if you see this little rule set button up in the top right, as I mentioned, we have uh, 35 different rule sets, everything from passenger, motion picture, short haul property and passenger. Uh, we have California and Texas intrastate rules, lots of different uh, rule sets in here for US, Canada, and Mexico. And all I have to do is select the right rule set, and there we go. To do my actual driver logs, I just turn the device sideways, and this is my um, rod chart, it's called. And I can be on duty, not driving. I can be driving, or I can be in the sleeper berth, or I can be off duty. And drivers have to account for 24 hours a day. Um, I, can, I can swipe my finger across the screen to look at different days um, that, I, that I want to see. Um, I can look at my past entries that I've made in my logs. I can um, view those entries. I can edit them or delete them, as the case may be. So it's very, very simple, very easy to use logs. I can also tap on the date field and move around as well there. Uh, as far as inspections go, um, <clears throat> we do three kinds of inspections. This is a list of the driver's past inspections. So if I want to do a new inspection, I just tap New. And we do pre-trip inspections. We do interim inspections or load checks. Those can be documented. And then we do post-trip inspections. So I just drop in my odometer. <clears throat> and by the way, if you're on the EOBR system, this will automatically populate from the, uh, from the fleet links box. So you don't have to enter it if you're on the electronic system. I record that. I choose a truck, and I'm going to choose a trailer. Now I've got my equipment train. I can drop in my shipper, my commodities, and any bill of lading document numbers that I want to track. I can save that. <clears throat> and when I'm ready to start my inspection, I just tap on the piece of equipment that I'm inspecting, and up pops the approved uh, inspection checklist. The, these are all the truck systems in level two. And if we can come down here to level three if we do hazardous material hauling. We also have the hazmat um, inspection checklist as well. And everything in here is, uh, is we assume it passes unless it doesn't. If it doesn't pass, the driver can uh, very simply, say he's checking his brakes and he notices that uh, there's a leak in one of the brake lines. I just tap on it. I mark it as failed. I can dictate or type some comments into my device. I can take a picture of that and then immediately send that in to the company to notify them of what's going on. And I can also make what I call an observation, which is um, uh, something that's going on with the truck. Uh, maybe wiper blades need to be replaced soon, or I've got excess wear on my 
left front steering tire, so I can make observations in here and take pictures of that and send that into the company as well uh, to let them know that there's something that needs to be looked at on this particular vehicle. And they can get it in right away or schedule it for their next maintenance. So that's a little bit about inspections. Uh, like I said, equipment, I can, I can actually look up equipment. Uh, and I just put in a vehicle number and a license plate number, and it'll go up into the cloud and self-assign that piece of equipment to me. And, uh, and, and so I can do that. Um, reports uh, are very simple. Uh, driver reports. Uh, we default to what a DOT officer is legally allowed to ask for, eight days of reports. There's current day plus the past seven. I can change that. I can make it, you know, 14 days, or I can make it, uh, I can make it three days. Whatever, whatever I want on that, I can change, and I can also change the date range if I want. When I'm done, I build the report, and here's the driver log report. You can see that I have these vertical lines are inspections. The horizontal lines are the actual driver logs for um, uh, looks like February or excuse me, April 14th. It lists all of my um, activities that I did: driving, on duty, inspections, off duties, <clears throat> and that just follows right through with the uh, driver log. Populates all the data for the driver, adds up all the miles driven for him, does all of that for the driver. So it's very simple. After I review my logs, I hit this little approve button up in the top to approve them. And then I can either sign and view or I can sign and email them. Uh, all of the DOT officers have emails now, so I can actually create a PDF file of my signed driver's logs. Uh, put in the uh, the uh, email and hit the send button and off it goes. Uh, inspection reports work exactly the same. Uh, I just let it compile and there's my a record of my inspection reports. So that's basically how it appears and it, it looks about the same whether you're on an Android device or an Apple device. On the back end we have a web portal that gives you all of the driver service data so we have a number of different tabs from drivers to equipment to loads. Here's payroll tab and here's our report tab. So on the driver tab, I can, I can look at all of my drivers. I can break out my drivers by divisions and groups and carriers. Uh, here's my rule set that, that each driver is using. Here's HWT is hours work today. EHT is eligible hours tomorrow. Here's my current, here's what I'm doing right now, my current status and my location and my, and my time and date for that. And I can sort these fields with these, uh, with these uh, boxes here. So I'm looking for a particular driver or a particular group or division. I can filter out the results based on that. Or I can just click on the column head. Let's say I want to, I click on the EHT column. Here's the drivers with the least amount of hours. Let's say I've got a load to pick up. These are the drivers with the most hours available, and here's their location. So I can very quickly, very easily make a fleet management decision about picking up or, or dropping loads or dispatching to a service if I'm a service-based company. I can also uh, hit the DCW button up here on the right, and that launches a web service that actually takes me right into the driver logs. So I have the driver information on the left, I have the hour summary on the right, and then I have the actual driver logs in the center panel. And I can go back a day if I want to see what, uh, well, not very exciting there. Let's see. Let's go back to the 15th, or let's say the 9th. So I can click on the date field, and here's the 9th for this particular driver. Um, you can look at all of the detail on his logs for that particular day. So again, very simple, very easy to get into that. All of my trailers and other equipment is, is here. Uh, Fleet Links tracks all of the power units. We track all of the trailers. Uh, loads can be imported into our system, or we can build an API to, for the legacy uh, fleet management system that the company is using. And again, equipment, drivers, and loads can be assigned and created a trip, and that will be pushed down to the driver's device.
The payroll tab is all set and ready to go. Uh, custom reports can be created. Any of the driver information and filters can be put in to custom create reports. All of the reports are, are all of the data is downloadable, anything from driver info to hour summaries, violation reports, uh, time card reports, all of the data is exportable. And uh, again, it's may, we try to make it very simple, very easy, very functional to use. Back to you guys. Well, thank you, Mario, and uh, thank you, Robert. Appreciate the overview of the technology and where it goes. I wanted to chat with you guys a little bit about the applications of this. Obviously, it has a lot of depth, has a lot of information that can be derived, and the efficiencies uh, are clear. Talk to me a little bit about where this can be deployed. Where do you see it being deployed? Um, obviously, the the use of this is not just for large uh, fleets. It looks like it can be used for smaller fleets and smaller entities as well. Can you talk a little bit about those? Most definitely, yes. Um, as I mentioned briefly during the PowerPoint, uh, we do have a service provider that's a subsidiary of ours uh, that uses it inside of their fleet. And there you're seeing it primarily to used for optimized routing across the uh, install base. Uh, they're also using it for average installation times. So we've got a variety of trucks out there at any given time. We're getting some very, very, very close metrics now on how long an average install takes based on region, based on vehicle, and based on the install type, depending on if it's a uh, DOCSIS-based fixed wireless or a WiMAX or whatever it happens to be. So getting all of those metrics is allowing us to better schedule our installs and improve the number that we can get done in a day. We can also see the number of installs based on anything that comes outside of the norm. Uh, for example, if when this is one of my customers as opposed to my own, but one of our customers uh, noticed that of his seven installers, there was one that it always took him a good hour and a half to two hours for one install in the afternoon whenever the average for all the rest was about 20 minutes. Well, they took a look at it after the fact and it turned out that right after lunch every day he was heading off to the lake and doing a little bit of fishing before getting into his next install. So it's things like that that uh, you can see really quickly whenever you have this data. Um, any kind of a change, anything that's out of the normal, out of the norm just stands out very easily. Uh, we've also seen it in use for municipalities and governmental organizations where they're tracking not only the personal use vehicles uh, that are provided to their uh, employees, but also things like graders. Um, we're tracking a bunch of snow plows where they need to know where the snow plow is being, where it is, and where it's going next. Uh, they're also tracking if the blades are up and down, for example. Um, we have, again, refrigerated units that are being used where they're using a sensor on the refrigeration unit to make sure that the door doesn't get left open and they end up spoiling an entire load. Uh, we've also seen it used in um, a variety of different services, service type companies, uh, where they're either laying cable, uh, doing tower construction, regular construction. Um, We've even seen it on equipment as odd as riding mowers, where they were looking at tracking the amount of time it took to do a specific park areas. So the a few the examples, anyway. The, the applications are, are pretty broad, and I want to note that the application goes not only to the vehicle itself, but also uh, what it's transporting. So if there's a trailer or an attachment or something that goes with that vehicle, it's also monitoring that. And the uh, efficiencies go to not just gas mileage. I think one of the slides noted that Mario showed um, the guy went and recorded how much expenses he has, and he shows $412.62 in gasoline for a single fill-up. So those of you who uh, manage or drive or operate vehicles, uh, especially truck, large truck vehicles, understand that the fuel costs are, are very high and getting higher every day. Um, so if you can manage your routes, if you can manage your loads, if you can manage um, how the vehicles are used more efficiently, those costs come down um, on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. Um, how we'll easy is if I, if I can If I can just jump in for just 30 seconds there. Um, these systems, when you start looking at the vehicle metrics, uh, it's not unusual for the system to pay for itself within a few months. 
by watching things like um, watching your, your engine speeds and, and uh, road speeds and idle times and things like that. Um, you can save a lot of money very quickly with these types of systems. Yeah, and, and the efficiency of that um, combined with the ability to do reporting, uh, there are two other things that come to bear that can both save you money and protect you. One is uh, regulatory side, the legislative and regulatory side, um, is becoming more and more um, stringent and requiring more and more reporting on behalf of companies that use fleets. And, and secondly, as uh, Robert indicated in his story about the, the vehicle that um, was parked and was hit instead of being accused of being the one that did the damage, uh, liability is, is clearly something that this can benefit. Um, I assume you can hook equipment to this like a camera or something if you want to have additional um, information. Is that correct? Most definitely, yeah. Accident cameras can be uh, tied into the system. Uh, it would be a store and forward type application as opposed to HD streaming, um, simply from a data usage perspective. But definitely, we have the ability to uh, tie into a camera and also to store a fair amount of uh, video footage, for example, inside the unit for either review in the case of an accident or an event, or for uh, uploading at the end of the day back at the garage if uh, it's something that you want to keep for extended periods. So and one of I, our... The other thing that, did you mention, I don't remember if Robert mentioned specifically fuel tax reporting, but for those of you familiar with the trucking industry, if the reporting or fuel tax reporting is a big deal, uh, with our system, not only can you get all of the miles off of this, um, but you can actually capture the fuel purchases and uh, really uh, take a lot of the wear and tear of creating those, um, those if the reports. I, I want to ask a question about that uh, type of reporting, especially one of our listeners asked a question about the federal requirements and what's likely to happen within the next couple of three years. Um, certainly for long haul vehicles, the, the federal requirements for maintaining records is, is fairly strong. Uh, what other types of, of uh, legislative or local, state, uh, federal requirements are there for reporting right now that this can help with? Well, maintaining, maintaining uh, vehicle history records is a big deal. Uh, now you've got inspection reports tied to vehicles and you have a complete history of that. Uh, the uh, FMCSA is constantly tweaking and changing the rules in the name of uh, safety, uh, and that's why we have 35 different rule sets. We have uh, several, but three different rule changes effective J July 1st of this year alone. And um, so, so it, we're, we're constantly seeing this machination of these rules going on, and drivers, uh, it's, it's hard for drivers to keep track of all this stuff. And so this really simplifies and makes it easy. There are other applications out there. I don't know of any that has the extent of the, uh, the, the number of different rule sets that we have. So that's a little bit of a differentiation between us and some of the other systems out there. So you mentioned customization. Um, what about keeping it updated? Obviously, with the rules changing, there's got to be a way to keep the, the systems updated. Do you guys uh, monitor and update the systems when there is a regulatory change? Yeah, absolutely. We monitor what's going on with the FMCSA uh, on a weekly basis. Any rule changes that happen, um, it usually doesn't take us more than a few days to actually program those changes into our system, and then we got to get them through the uh, the App Store approvals. So you know, easily within three to four weeks, we can we can build and, and have and deploy a whole new rule set. I wanted to differentiate, and please correct me if I'm wrong. The, this applies to all different size vehicles. If you are using larger trucks or long haul vehicles, then the J1939 standards apply. But if you're using class four, class three, class two smaller vehicles, these could be bucket trucks, these could be emergency vehicles, they could be taxis, public safety buses, etc. They follow the OBD2 standard, which is a standard that allows uh, various aspects of the vehicle's operation to be monitored and recorded. Um, that, that applies to all different kinds of trucks and cars and vehicles, right? 
Absolutely. Got, and what's yeah. nice about our system, uh, sorry, what's, what's nice about our system is um, uh, we, have, we have companies that have local fleets that don't need to keep the DOT logs, and then they have long-haul drivers that need to keep them. They put our system on all of those because they have a unified system, so they know where all their drivers are at. They can get their payroll reports off, and it just really simplifies everything, having the entire fleet on one system. How, how easy yeah, no, how on the easy OBD. Is this, I'm sorry, how easy is this product to install uh, and maintain? Is it, is it a major process, or is it easy to do? No, it's a very, a very simple install process for the black box itself. Um, for the larger trucks, it's a nine-pin connector, plug and play, and then you tie into your ignition sense line. Um, on the smaller vehicles for OBD2, it's a port that's uh, usually right by your steering wheel, and again, it's a plug and pay, play. They, you have the port, we have the plug, you're done. Um, and on the OBD2 and the J1939 side, uh, both of those connectors are the same connectors that whenever you bring the car into the garage, uh, they plug it in to get the diagnostics off that engine. So instead of doing that on a, you know, whenever you go in for your oil change, all of a sudden now you have that diagnostics information in real time. So Robert, would you pull up your efficiency slide because I want to show people where the best cost savings are. And while you're doing that, I want to make a couple comments about this webinar. A lot of information in this webinar, as are in a lot of webinars, um, Streetwave likes to provide a basis of of finding that information easily. Uh, by the next day or so, you will be able to view this webinar again on demand uh, by going to www.streakwave.com um, and finding Vesema uh, as one of the manufacturers. We'll have a page there where you can watch this uh, directly, or you can go to our YouTube channel at any time. Uh, that's uh, youtube.com slash streakwave. That's S-T-R-E-A-K-W-A-V-E. So if you want to watch this webinar or any portion of it again, you'll have the ability to do that. Um, if there are questions about the installation of this product or the use of this product, configuring this product or its cost, or if you're interested in ordering this product, Streakwave is available um, and is a distributor for this product. And we can be reached at 888-604-5234. And that number, again, will be on the webinar page, but it's 888-604. 5234, or you could just come to streakwave.com. Uh, Robert has just put up a slide which shows you some of the efficiencies that you gain from this system and how uh, real dollars or uh, real savings can be attributed. Robert, you want to talk about that briefly, and then we'll wind up. No, for sure, yeah. We did a, this is a quick overview of some of the ROI areas. As I mentioned during the presentation, speed reduction is definitely one. That the five mile per hour difference makes 10% lower costs um, or 10% better miles per gallon, depending on how you want to look at it. On the idling side, just taking 30 minutes per day out, and I showed one 30 minute per day idle there, uh, with 100 vehicles makes for a very large annual savings. Um, and that's estimating fuel costs of 360. And, I'm not sure where all, all of the attendees are today, but I know that fuel is getting up higher than that in a lot of areas. Um, and as we mentioned uh, on the office staff on the back end, uh, simply saving an hour a day, being able to uh, schedule your maintenance more effectively and getting the real-time information that you need to keep your trucks on the road um, can save a lot of money over top of that year too. And on the driver services side, um, Mario, I was very conservative with the uh, ROI for that and how much time saved by the operator by doing all of their tracking and inspections using the device, as well as for a service so provider, you can also track your installs too. So, yeah, I mean, easily uh, again, average three to five hours per week savings. You're going to get about somewhere between a seven to ten percent increase in productivity for your drivers, which is which is huge. That's a, that's a lot of, uh, of extra work that can be put in by the drivers. So the benefits and, and of I'm, this product are, are uh, both economic and liability and regulatory based. They give you all sorts of, of directions in which to work. And uh, in, in short order, um, the cost of this can be met by just the savings and benefits that are provided. Um, I'm going to cut us off at this point because we believe in, in sticking to the time limits that we have for each of our webinars. I want to thank 
um, our presenters, both Robert Forget, who's the AVP for Vesemo Networks, um, who is uh, in charge of and oversees the Fleet Links project at Vesema, uh, and Mario Raio, who's the general manager for Mobile Warrior, who does the interface portion of this uh, product. Both of them have a really good knowledge and in-depth understanding of how this product works. Streetwave is available to answer any questions that you might have about this product or this product uh, class. Uh, this is not your typical tracking. It is not your typical asset management. It actually folds those functions in, but there's a lot more. And from what I've seen, the cost is very, very reasonable and very, very um, accessible. Whether you have a small fleet or a large fleet, whether it's one or two trucks or vehicles, or it's a long haul fleet across the country. Um, again, I want to thank my guests for uh, speaking today. Please attend us again regularly at Streetwave webinars. We do provide webinars on a range of wireless related subjects throughout the year. And they are all generally free offerings. Um, and we'd like to get your questions. Thank you to our audience. Uh, if we didn't get your question today, we will get to it offline. And we appreciate your attendance. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day, both of you, uh, both of you for uh, presenting and to our audience. Thank you.